So preparation for me has two key dimensions and, and someone's giving me some feedback here about practicing their yoga on a daily basis. And that's certainly very good. And, and I like that because that's about physical preparation, physical, mental, emotional. So the first part of preparation, will be what, what I would call technical tactical. So this is, you know, news, data levels, looking at your strategy, thinking about the game plan or the approach for that particular trading session, bearing in mind that you know, no two trading sessions are the same. Uh, markets might have slightly different dynamics, different sentiment, different motivations. Uh, and one of the key factors from a, a psychology perspective that I want to suggest would be useful for you if you're not doing it already is market scenario or rehearsal. So in sport, we call this if-then thinking. So looking at you know the market and what, what may happen during the course of the day, so there's data coming out and so on, we, we would know that's going to come out. Is it going to be above or below expected? You know, what, how might the market react to that? And running through in your mind some of those possible scenarios and what you would do. So if the market does this, then I will do this. And just by doing you know, a few of those as part of your preparation, if any of those events do actually happen, what happens is neurologically, so mentally, psychologically, you're, you're far more ready, you're prepared, you respond more quickly and you respond with lower anxiety. And that can make all the difference in those moments, just having a bit of, you know, proactivity, looking forward, but having that little mental rehearsal, running it through in the mind. That was a, a, a big thing that we did in sport, particularly if athletes were going to big events, you know, looking at you know, what might happen and how you're going to respond to that so that they can just have, you know, a little bit more confidence and a bit more in control in those situations. So that's your technical tactical. But obviously the next element of your preparation is the mental, emotional, physical. Now, this is really important, you know, things like, Sleep, breakfast, um, you know, exercise. We might have some mental, emotional training, you know, some mindfulness training, which I, I personally endorse uh, quite highly. Could be music, could be mental rehearsal. Um, interestingly, there was there's two traders who come to mind, both of whom very successful traders, who music was a big part of their preparation. Um, you know, in fact, one guy had about a 15 to 20 minute drive to work each day. And he prepared for himself. I think he had about four or five songs in a row uh, and he would play them and they would basically change in their kind of tempo uh, uh, and flavor, for want of a better word. So that when he left home, it was one style of music, one tempo, one level to a different level when he arrived at his trading screen or the office prior to the trading screen. Um, so it was almost like a kind of a winding him up and he had a different set of, of, of music for then coming back from trading and back to home. So he's using that music to kind of affect his mental and emotional state and, and very effectively uh, as people do in sport and as some of us do awfully in life as well, you know, music can be very powerful. But, you know, a fundamentals like getting a good night's sleep, you know, they're, they're things we can easily take for granted and we'll talk later a bit more about energy, but these things are really important, being ready because if you're tired and if you're hungry and if you're fatigued, then no matter how good your strategy is, no matter how much skill and knowledge you've got, you simply will not be able to get the best out of yourself. So, you know, it's important. You think about yourself as being a container. Uh, we need to have a container in good shape so that everything inside the container can kind of work well uh, and can produce its best results. So preparation, absolutely key. So, you know, again, you know, whatever level you're at, whether you're a four or up to a seven, think to yourself, you know, what could I be doing more of or what could I do it better? Or maybe what do I need to stop doing? Look at it get me more prepared when I turn up, you know, and, and it's another challenge sometimes. And, and I traded myself from about 2006 to 2010, um, really just to kind of see what trading was like and kind of get a flavor from the other side of, of the screens as such. But I found myself, you know, you get to the screens, you want to start trading, you've been doing something else. The payoff is preparation versus execution. That's the big challenge. Um, but our execution when we're not well prepared is not our best execution. So, uh, we're giving away edge uh, and you know, markets are competitive. We don't want to be giving away any edge. We want to be claiming edge from other people. So preparation fundamentally really important. Think about, you know, what if scenarios or if then scenarios and think about yourself, making sure you're at your best when you're in front of the trading screen is so, so, so important. So the next component would be the performance part, or as I would, I would call it execution. And, and three key parts to execution in terms of what we can do psychologically, which is attention, emotion and energy. 
So we'll take a look at each of these one by one and I'll try and give you like a little routine, a little habit that you can maybe develop for yourself. So here's a great one for attention. And it's a very simple habit, but very powerful. Attention is critical because without good attention, it's very difficult to do anything well. It's difficult to read, have a conversation, listen to music, trade the markets, play sport, play an instrument, you name it, pretty much whatever it is, at the core of that, you need a well-developed attention. Uh, and in trading, one of the key things we want to keep our attention on is process, our trading process. Am I making good decisions? Now, for, for you to be able to make good decisions, you need to know where your attention is because all too often – what we see is traders' attention drift towards you know, how much money am I making or how much am I losing or how much might I make or how much might I lose. And when attention is on, on P&L, on results, on outcomes, it creates, in most people, you know, quite a high level of measurable anxiety or, or performance, stress, or interference that gets in the way of making good decisions. So a very simple habit. During the course of the trading day, the trading session, just ask yourself, you know, what am I focusing on? Have a post-it note, put it on a screen on your desk, put it on your, you know, put, sorry, put it on the post-it note, put it on your screen, put it on your desk. What am I focusing on? Or where is my attention right now? And just start to train yourself, build the habit of noticing where your attention is. And this is one reason why I do a lot of work with my trade with using mindfulness type training, because very good at building attention, uh, noticing where my attention is. Has it been distracted? And if it has been distracted, if I've gone from focusing on making my good decision and I'm suddenly now my mind's wandering, thinking about um, my results, then being able to bring it back again and then keep it there, that's the skill of attention. But just starting to ask yourself the question, what am I focus focusing on? Where is my attention now? Is very, very powerful because if you start to notice where your attention is, then you're already beginning to manage your attention. And that's the first step. It's also a good question, actually, to ask if you are having a bit of, you know, uh, a challenge in your trading, if you notice your thinking or your emotions are, are maybe, you know, interfering in some way with your trading performance, ask yourself, what am I focusing on? Track it back because attention is a big driver of perception and of emotion. So talking about emotion, here's another great habit to build for yourself. And, and this is just about emotional awareness, which is really powerful. So just starting to notice um, what you're feeling. There's a guy uh, called Travis, Dr. Travis Bradbury, wrote a book, uh, Self-Awareness. I think it's talking about self-awareness, how to unlock the, the hidden power of happiness and satisfaction and performance or something along those lines. But certainly the, the, the main title, Self-Awareness, Dr. Travis Bradbury. And uh, he did a, a study in there. Now, what he found was in the study that only 36 percent of people were able to identify the emotion they were feeling in real time. Now, that skill, the ability to notice how you're feeling in real time is absolutely critical because that is the building block of being able to regulate emotion. So until you until you can start kind of start to catch yourself. Feeling an emotion in real time, it's very hard to regulate it. And what happens then is your emotions are basically controlling you. You know, they're happening to you, whereas actually we can be the observer of them. Another really interesting thing that happens when you start to notice your emotions is it changes your relationship with the emotion. You become an observer of what you're feeling. And it's a bit like, you know, there's you noticing now a person who's having that feeling. So it gives you that little bit of distance and space. Now, that is critical because that's the pause uh, before you react. That noticing, that awareness, when practiced over time, allows you to actually have what we call the, the power of inhibition or veto, to actually you know, to have an emotion that might make you go one way, but then actually you can choose something different. You've got some behavioral flexibility. So the simple process, the habit to build is, is this, checking in. Notice how you're feeling. So here, here are some ways you can do it. Uh, some clients I work with set an alarm on their phone or their computer. Uh, it could be every hour, could be less than that, could be every half an hour, every 15 minutes. And it's a little ping and it's a reminder to check in. 
how am I feeling right now? Just noticing it. And, and name the emotion and what is it I'm feeling? That's called affect labeling. And, and that's very powerful, actually. Good study showing that when you name an emotion, uh, it's like taking the message from the messenger and it reduces the emotional activities. It kind of quietens the, the emotional part in the brain, the limbic system down, which is, which is good news for us in trading.